Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning to all the citizens looking in on television. Uh, Raven County Commissioners Board of Ed uh, Board of Commissioners for uh, May 18th is now in session. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Commissioner Booker. Here. Commissioner Liner. Here. Commissioner McCabe. Here. Commissioner Mitchell. Here. Commissioner Sampson. Here. Vice Chairman Jones. Here. Chairman Mark. Here. And since we're doing some remote participation, I'm going to continue with that. Um, County Manager Jack Fight. Here. Assistant County Manager Gene Hodges. Here. Finance Director Craig Warren. Here. Human Resources Director Amber Parker. Here. Here. County Attorney Ari Grady. Here. JCPC Chair Jennifer Dacey. Here. Social Services Director Jeffrey Merritt. Here. Parts Director Kelly Walker. Here. Economic Development Director Jeff Wood. Airport Director Andrew Shorter. Holland Consulting Plan Planners Landon Holland. Planning Director Don Baumgartner. Here. Natural Resource Conservationist Patrick Baker. Here. Solid Waste Director Steve Stephen Astor. Emergency Services Director Stanley Kite. Present. Health Director Scott Harrelson. Here. Okay, thank you. Okay, could we stand for the pledge and the prayer? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Almighty God of love and mercy, God of power and God of might, today we pray the understanding to always seek your wisdom and justice. It's through your authority righteously administered that our commissioners are able to govern this county with laws enacted for our betterment. So we pray for your spirit that they might be properly guided by your divine charity and unassuming faithfulness. Give both counsel and courage to the leaders of this Board of County Commissioners, as well as other leaders of this county, the state of North Carolina, and the United States of America. And they always seek your purpose and the well-being of this great people. Grant now your unfathomable protection that they lead our country with the honesty of providence and the integrity of high ideals. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Commissioners, you've had the opportunity to look over the agenda. We have a motion to approve the agenda as is. So moved. Second? So moved. All in favor say aye. 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 Nays? The ayes have it. Next is the consent agenda. There is a, con a correction to the consent agenda under minutes. Uh, instead of Craven County College, it should be Craven County Schools. Do I, and in addition to tax releases and refunds, the WIC budget amendment, National Foster Care Month proclamation, a request to set a public hearing on June 1st, 2020 for the purpose of receiving input on FY 2020-221 budget. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Booker? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Sampson? Yes. Vice Chairman Jones? Yes. Chairman Mark? Yes. Next is presentation of the Juvenile Crime Prevention Council budget presentation by Jennifer Dacey. Yes, good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. You should have uh, before you um, proposed 
funding for the next fiscal year. And uh, you will notice that we are continuing to fund existing programs. And because we had expansion funding due to raise the age in North Carolina, we did have some additional funds we were able to utilize for the next fiscal year. So we've added one new program, which is a mentoring program uh, that's actually been run for a number of years by the Abundant Life Church in Duffy Field. And we have funded them for um, for the next fiscal year so that they can continue their work with older juveniles who uh, are, are now um, part of our juvenile system. So uh, with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you all may have. Uh, our, com our programs are continuing to operate even during this pandemic, uh, and we've been continuing to meet. Uh, even though school is, is not happening in Craven County, our uh, all of our programs, teen court, community service, uh, our family connections program, those three have been functioning um, in spite of the school closures and doing their work. Of course, the Volt Center has not been open, but my understanding is they will begin uh, some classes in the next uh, week or so. Um, and so obviously it's been a different spring, but luckily we had our funding already planned at the outset of, of this pandemic. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Can I have a motion first, please? So moved. Second. Okay, discussion. Do any of the commissioners have any questions? I had a question on the administrative funds. There's a significant decrease from current funding to your recommendation, Ms. Dacey. Um, right. So uh, one of the, uh, the, the features of, of how we're able to do JCPC funding with the state, they will allow us to keep uh, administrative funds in, in that account and then I can utilize some of those funds to supplement programs during the fiscal year if it's required, if there is a specific need. Say sometimes the restitution bank, for instance, you might have a lot of kids utilizing it because they're working off those community service hours they've been uh, sentenced to serve. And so oftentimes we'll need to move money into that account, for instance, or someone might, you know, there might be a specific need. So we keep that funding there uh, in the event we need to add it to a program. Um, and this year we, um, we actually will, will, because we've not been having our meetings um, for the last few months, we will have some funds there that we're going to be utilizing to sponsor some specific juvenile related events um, over the next few months. I'm, I'm hoping uh, the sheriff's expressed an interest in using some of it for a national night out, things of that nature, but that's, uh, flexible money, so to speak, okay. and um, typically administrative funds that we utilize are, are far less than what you're seeing in this current fiscal year. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Uh, Jennifer, you and I had had a discussion on uh, the, I believe it was the teen court with the problem with COVID-19 and uh, some additional children problems. Could you expound on that? Well, I think uh, one of the issues they have had, our teen court uh, kids do specific um, coursework through teen court. And so one of the things the school system is trying to figure out, often those kids have tablets that they can utilize for schoolwork uh, from the county. And one of the difficulties we've had is, is facilitating some way for them to do the work that they need to do for teen court, because apparently the tablet limits um, what kinds of, what links they can open up and things of that nature. So we now are trying to work through that. Uh, and my understanding from the state is that all of our programs are going to have to have contingency plans in place by the fall so that if we end up having to go back into another lockdown situation, there will be some, some additional planning ahead of that so that hopefully we can um, maneuver those situations. But that's been a challenge for teen court. Of course, we do have some students in our county who, who also have connectivity issues, but um, 
our programs are finding a way for the most part to work through those if they can't communicate through FaceTime and they're communicating by you know phone and, that, and things of that nature um, so that has been a little bit of a challenge but I'm hopeful that that this together our team court and and school system folks can work through that issue thank you mm -hmm. Are there are any other questions thank you very much uh, Jennifer thank you all appreciate appreciate all of your help uh, I have a motion Second. All, all in favor say aye. 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 Nays, the ayes have it. Next is Department Matters Social Services, Jeffrey Merritt. Thank you for having us. We bring them for you today um, for your consideration of the extension of the child support contract that is currently through Maximus Human Services. That, that one year extension would begin on July 1st and run through June 30, 2021. Excuse uh, me, Jeff, uh, could you talk a little louder? And all the speakers in the future, if you could talk a little louder because we're having problems hearing here. I'll go ahead. Can you hear me better now, Chairman? Yeah, a little bit better. Um, so I, we, we bring before you today uh, consideration for a one-year extension to our current child support contract. Uh, Maximus Human Services currently administers the child support program. That original contract began in fiscal year 15-16 and was for a five-year period. And in that contract, there was the option for an additional five one-year extensions. This would be the first of those five one-year extensions for you to consider. Um, and you see a contract amendment, uh, the terms and conditions set forth in the original contract shall remain the same. I mean, I'll be happy to answer any other questions that you may have regarding this. Also, Billy Smith, who is our um, manager over at Maximus Human Services, child support office, well with me. Okay. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Discussion. Any discussion by any of the commissioners? Mr. Chairman, we do intend to bid this contract out next year. It was unfortunate we got in a position this year with the current climate, but next year we feel we're going to go out to bid and see what the market's like. Okay. That's a good idea. <laughs> we always like to try to find the best price, sir. Okay. I have a, mo a motion and a second. Let's have a roll call vote on this, please. Commissioner Booker? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Sampson? Yes. Vice Chairman Jones? Yes. Chairman Mark? Yes. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Have a good day. Department of Matters, CARTS, Rural Site Operating, RSO period of performance extension request by uh, Kelly Walker. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Was approved to receive a rural, good morning. Parts was re approved to receive rural state operating grant funding from the North Carolina Department of Transportation Integrated Mobility Division for the current fiscal year of 2019 to 2020. The purpose of this project is to help fund employment-related transportation for rural citizens to and or from places of employment with a guaranteed ride home. The project would allow CARTS to obtain data regarding unmet employment transportation needs in Craven County. CARTS received the written contract for this funding on February 20th. The kickoff date for the project was set for March 10th. Schools, agencies, and businesses, however, began to close due to COVID-19 soon after the kickoff day. The period of performance for this grant ends June 30th, 2020. Parts is requesting authorization to submit to the Integrated Mobility Division for a period of performance extension ending June 30th, 2021. This would allow CART to re-advertise for this project as well as reschedule outreach efforts to educate local employers and their workforce. Verification has been received at the Craven 
100 Alliance local match commitment would continue through June 30th, 2021 if the period of performance is approved by the NCDOT Integrated Mobility Division. A copy of the extension request was provided with attachment four and I will answer any questions you may have. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Vice Chairman. Kelly, could you remind us what that um, amount was for in the local match? And the entire grant was $20,000. $10,000 of it would come from the grant, and $10,000 would come from the local match, um, which was committed to by um, C1A. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Mr. Chairman, and I, I know I'm, I'm having a little trouble here in Kelly, but the thing I think that needs to be said about this is right as this program was taken off, COVID-19 happened, and we were seeing some direct help to the employers in the industrial park. I know of several instances where that person was able to maintain a job because of this service. So I want to make sure you knew this was working, but it had to be put on pause until times get better. All right. We have a um, okay, if I, if I heard correctly, yes, we, it was just it's put on pause. We're actually still um, running the grant, but because of um, the and, and a lot of the employers being closed, there's not been um, access to it need. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Booker? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Sampson? Yes. Vice Chairman uh, Jones? Yes. Chairman Mark? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Next on the agenda is Department of Matters Economic Development Responses to RFQ for Engineering and Construction Management Services for the Industrial Park. Jeff Wood. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. As you know, we're extending our water and sewer in the industrial park along uh, Lot 19. Uh, this was paid for through uh, uh, county or uh, a state infrastructure development fund grant, as well as county funds and Duke funds. Uh, the office, in conjunction with finance, put out an RFQ end of March uh, that was due April 14th, extended till April 21st. We uh, put together a review team uh, with the director and the assistant director of planning, uh, followed a template along from finance. Um, we had a pretty good uh, showing. We had seven responses, all well-qualified uh, firms. I would have been uh, comfortable with all, all seven. Uh, during the first part of the process, we eliminated three, mainly on the timeline, as you know, from uh, the last time I talked to you, we had a project going on in the park, it's working in parallel with this water and sewer, so it's imperative that we get this uh, water and sewer infrastructure in the ground. Uh, and then also the local experience in conjunction with industrial park experience. So we narrowed it down to four. You'll see the score sheet uh, that uh, was provided for you for that interview process uh, that took place at the uh, end of April, then May 1st. On that interview process, we really dove down into their experience with IDF funds, uh, the experience with the Duke Site Readiness Program. There's been a number of, of uh, services already, uh, research already done on this property, so we wanted to make sure that we were getting uh, utilization of that resource. Uh, the ability to finish this project by April 2021, depending on weather. Um, the ability to work with multiple projects. Let's not forget that there are multiple projects going on around that right now uh, and will continue. And the ability to, to transfer back over into a larger project if that would be needed. And so through that process, uh, the office recommends Withers Ravenel. This is very impressed with uh, their experience of working in multiple projects. They do have some local experience. I've, I've worked with them since I've been here. Um, uh, they have a history of working multiple projects at the same time, as well as large projects. And, and probably one of the things that I really appreciated was during their interview, not only were they uh, understanding of the Duke Site Randis program, but they were looking at how some of those engineering uh, services that we've already been procured in the past could be used to streamline the time and the cost 
So uh, again, all seven uh, were well qualified. Uh, the four that we picked for the interview were, were extremely uh, uh, strong and in various ways. Withers to me and, and to the review board, uh, review uh, committee seemed to be the, the strongest of those four. So I'm asking today for uh, board authorization for me to uh, negotiate with Withers Ravenel for a uh, contract for engineering contract services. Okay. Commissioners, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. I have a motion to second. Discussion? Any discussion by any of the commissioners? All those in favor say aye. 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 Nays? The ayes have it. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. <clears throat> Next is the Department of Matters Airport CARES Act Airport Relief Funding. Andrew Shorter. <clears throat> um, Andrew, before you say anything, I. I think the commissioners would like to congratulate you on your award that you received for the 2020 Airport Professional of the Year Award. Uh, we're very proud of it, and we thank you very much. Can't hear him. He's on mute. Hey, Andy, you're, you're on mute. <laughs> Mr. Shorter, you're on mute. How about now? Now you're okay. <laughs> we didn't hear right, anything sorry, you said. I haven't used the phone and the computer yet. Um, okay, so again, uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Thank you for uh, uh, recognizing that. Again, it's very uh, humbling to be recognized by your peers uh, in any way, and I appreciate that. It's great. Uh, for the airport and again it's mostly about the team here um up down left right uh, if it wasn't for the team you know we can get done here what we uh, uh all the things that we try to get done so for this morning i'm here to talk to you about the cares act uh, grant funding that we're in receipt of from the faa uh, looking for approval it's in the amount of 14 million seven hundred thirteen thousand eight hundred twenty dollars and that amount represents uh, four years of operating funds for the airport. So the period of performance for this is uh, 48 months. Uh, it can be used for any lawful purpose that airport revenue uh, uh, can be used for. And uh, it's something where, the, in my opinion, <clears throat> the FAA recognizes the investments they put in these airports. Uh, we've talked about it before. One airport it, uh, it doesn't work for you. You have to have a network of airports. So. Within the CARES Act, the first uh, iteration of it, $10 billion was allocated for airports around the country. Uh, most people have heard where they've helped the airlines out, but without airports, the airlines can't operate. Federal government understands the economic impact of uh, aviation in this country. So through some pretty compli complicated formulas, um, that 14.7 amount is what uh, has been allocated to us, uh, authorized, so looking for uh, Approval here, so we can start to obligate it. Okay. Do I have a motion? So moved. moved. Second. 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 Here we have a motion and a second. Discussion. The only thing I'd like to say is, can we borrow some of that money for the county? <laughs> um, I, I, as much as I'd like to say so, uh, in in the language in several places it says the grant agreement must only be used for purposes directly related to the airport. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Liner. Mr. Shorter, do we have projects on the books already? You're ready to move on? Well, the interesting thing about this, this can be used for projects, but uh, right now this $14.7 million is specifically for operations and maintenance. Um, if we were to want to do a project with this, we would have to submit some supplemental information and really go through the normal process that we work with projects. We can subdivide some of this money further down the road, but for right now, the recommendation with the FAA was um, take this because they wanted to get it out very quickly, use it, what you need for operations and maintenance. And of course, uh, maybe most of you've heard that, uh, you know, we're, 
for about six weeks, we were only doing about 5% of our passenger traffic. Uh, this week or last week, we bumped up to about 10%, which is good, but you know you can't run a business off 10%. And that passenger traffic represents uh, almost 80% of our budget. So right now, we're going to focus this on operations and maintenance funding and then look down the road to see if there is a uh, the, the right project to go after with this. We still are expecting our normal grant funding for our, our program, programs, uh, projects, large capital projects that we have on the books. Next meeting, I should be coming to you with the grant for our aircraft rescue and firefighting building. Um, they have not gotten that out because of this other, assisting these other grants. And then for our, our normally planned 2020 grant funding, uh, our aircraft rescue firefighting truck and a few other things will also come back to you with another grant for that. So those projects are still moving on. This right now will be mostly focused on operations and maintenance to maintain the, the safe, secure, and efficient environment of the airport. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other questions by the commissioners? We have a motion, second. May I have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Booker? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Sampson? Yes. Vice Chairman Jones? Yes. Chairman Mark? Yes. Thank you, Jim. Next to Department Matters on Planning, uh, Landon Holland, Don Bumgardner, and Patrick Baker. Yes, sir, Chairman. Uh, uh, Landon Holland here. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm Landon Holland, representing Holland Consulting Planners. Uh, we are here to request that the board consider adoption of a resolution which would essentially result in the adoption of the Pamlico Sound Regional Hazard Mitigation Plan. I do have a board summary or write-up that was uh, included in your agenda packet. In the interest of informing the public, I will uh, simply read through that briefly and then <clears throat> I can address any questions that you may have. The attached resolution of adoption relates to the Pamlico Sound Regional Hazard Mitigation Plan. Pamlico Sound Regional Hazard Mitigation Plan includes Craven, Beaufort, Carteret, and the Pamlico counties, as well as the incorporated municipalities throughout the four county region. Planning process was initiated early last year, 2019, and will be completed following adoption of this resolution by the Board of Commissioners. Once adopted, it will be forwarded to FEMA for their formal certification of our five-year plan, meaning that upon adoption and certification, uh, the county will be certified uh, as having a, you know, a, a, an official hazard mitigation plan over that five-year period. Development of the draft document involves a series of four hazard mitigation planning committee meetings, as well as two public input meetings. Uh, these meetings were spread throughout the region in various locations uh, over the uh, eight to 12 month planning period. The county was represented by planning staff as well as two st citizen stakeholders. Uh, they were uh, appointed by the Board of Commissioners at the beginning of the process and included Daniel Hill Jr. and Bruce Heiss. Planning staff <clears throat> worked in conjunction with the project consultant uh, to draft the county strategies. These strategies were presented to the Board of Commissioners on February 17, 2020 at your uh, second commissioners meeting uh, that month in February. Uh, we have attached those strategies for your review as well as provided uh, a link to the project website, which is for the uh, interest of the public, www.pamlicohmp.com, www.pamlicohmp.com. In order for Craven County's hazard mitigation plan to stay in compliance, allowing the county to receive post-disaster assistance and long-term recovery funds uh, the staff re requests that the Board of Commissioners adopt the plan through the attached resolution. Um, so that provides an overview uh, of the project and process, and I can answer any questions that you all may have. Okay, that is Part A. Uh, in order to for Craven County has it mitigation plan to stay in compliance, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Nays. Okay, go on. Hazard Mitigation Grant Program. 
Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the second item we have before you today is a request or a resolution of just compensation for units associated with the Hurricane Florence expedited uh, buyout or acquisition program. Again, uh, I provided a board summary uh, in the agenda packets, uh, and I will read through that here briefly uh, and then address any questions. As you're aware, Craven County has received a hazard mitigation public assistance grant to be used for the expedited acquisition and demolition of six residential structures. Structures are located in repetitive loss areas of Craven County and received substantial damage from Hurricane Florence. Structures are located on Scott's Creek Drive, Howell Road, and Frank Avenue. On April 30th, staff received appraisals back from a from the ADL, AD Willis Appraisal Services Company. Values for these properties are represented on the attached res, quote, resolution establishing just compensation for selected real property in Craven County's Hurricane Florence Hazard Mitigation Grant Program, end quote. These properties were appraised based on their value prior to damage received from Hurricane Florence. As you will see in the attached resolution, the property located at 129 Scotts Creek Drive was sold during the grant process and according to program guidelines, we cannot pay the new owner more than what they paid for the property. If other appraisals from property owners are received, no more than a 15% adjustment can be made from the original appraised price. In order to move forward with the purchase of these properties under this program, the attached resolution establishing just compensation need to be adopted by the board, allowing the chairman the ability to sign the resolution, the county manager, Jack Vite III, the ability to sign the offer agreements, which would then be forwarded to the property owners for consideration. Um, so in summary, um, adopting the resolution will set the values, paving the way for the county to make a formal offer to those property owners, uh, at which point they have the option to seek a second appraisal uh, at their expense or accept the offer and proceed through the buyout process. Uh, I do have Chip Bartlett sitting in my office as well. So uh, he is the project manager and uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. <clears throat> okay, discussion. Commissioners have any questions? Seeing there are no questions, may I have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Booker? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Sampson? Yes. Vice Chairman Jones? Yes. Chairman Mark? Yes. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a good day. Barbara Matters, Solid Waste, Budget Amendment, Stephen Astor. Mr. Chairman. Oh, you got to see him. Yeah, I think Don, um, Don or Chad should be on here for the next item. Just a minute. Item C. For some reason, I don't have that uh, C page. Okay, that's a request for public hearing for amendments to the flood damage prevention ordinance. Don Bumgardner? Yes, yes, good morning. Uh, we're here this morning to discuss the new FEMA approved flood maps that are provided by the North Carolina Flood Mapping Program. These maps are set to go into effect on June the 19th for Craven County. In order to remain in compliance with the National Flood Insurance Program, the county is required to amend our current ordinance to reflect the newly revised state model flood damage prevention ordinance. Uh, and these are the guidelines that regulate our development within the regulatory flood zone. Um, we, by approving the amendment um, as written within the revised flood damage prevention ordinance, it will actually coincide with the proposed maps that FEMA has 
approved and the state have approved to go into effect on June the 19th of 2020. Uh, these preliminary flood maps were released to the county and the public on the state website for review on June 30th of 2016. These maps were created using data collected from prior hurricanes such as Emily in 1993, Fran in 1996, Isabel in 2003, Ophelia in 2005, two extra tropical storms of 2006, as well as 600 plus computer simulated storms. Since the release of these maps, the planning department has used many methods to raise awareness to inform the public of the proposed flood map changes, such as notifications on tax bills, announcements on the county's website, public workshop events, presentations to local organizations, outreach to each township, as well as flood zone assistance via the phone or in office meetings with the public. At this time, uh, if we fail to move forward to undertake any amendment, adoption of any amendment, uh, it would result in the loss of flood insurance for our homeowners within the flood plain areas. It would also jeopardize the county's any federally supported funds that the county would pursue uh, could potentially be lost because we're not in compliance with the uh, flood, flood ordinance requirement of FEMA. At this time, we need the board to set a public hearing for June 1st at 7 p.m. to hear, comment, and consider the adoption of the amended flood damage prevention ordinance. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, Don. The ordinance that you have here, does it mirror other coastal counties or do we have a totally separate document than um, other counties that surround us? No, it, it is the only ordinance that all the coastal counties would have. It is a state model and it's, we've got to adopt that in order to be in compliance with both FEMA and the state of North Carolina uh, flood regulations. And also, um, I know you shared this with us some months ago, and I apologize that I can't remember, but how many properties will be added, um, it will be declared to be in this flood zone now and have to take out flood insurance? Do you remember? Yes. Um, there is approximately 331 structures that have been added and placed in the floodplain. However, there has also been 438 structures removed from the regulatory floodplain. So we basically, uh, you know, have less structures being added that we do remove. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? You know, other discussion? Do I have a, uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Nays, the ayes have it. Thank you. Part D, Emergency Watershed Protection Program, EWP Survey Services. Good morning. Good morning, Patrick. On April 27th, Craven County solicited qualification seeking qualified licensed professional engineering or survey firms to perform survey services in support of the county's emergency watershed protection projects. On May 1st at 9 a.m., a pre-bid conference call was held with eight firms present. Request for, co for qualifications was due back on May the 12th. On May 13th, the bid review committee reviewed and ranked all the submitted qualifications. In order to move forward with the implementation of this program, staff requests 
that the Board of Commissioners award the contract to Vaughn and Melton as recommended. Once the firm is selected, staff can move forward with fee negotiation for service. Okay, do I have a motion? So move. Second. Uh, discussion. And there's no discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Nays, the ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next is Stephen Astor, Solid Waste Budget Amendment. Commissioner, my name is Stephen Astor. I am the Solid Waste Director for Craven County. Um, I'm here this morning to uh, for the board to approve the budget amendment shown in attachment eight, recognizing $175,000 to the Solid Waste Department from the Hurricane Florence FEMA revenue line. Um, since the middle of February, our department has seen a heavy increase uh, in citizens and traffic uh, at our convenience sites. And uh, this, this has led to a record setting numbers for trash disposal pools from our site. The three line items we use uh, for our department at for our convenience sites are hauling, which is the fee we pay for contractors to come and empty the boxes, our bulk waste tipping fees, which is the fees that are for disposal at the landfill, and the yard waste tipping fees that we pay to the landfill. Bulk waste and yard waste are separated because they're two different prices. Um, so when our boxes get full at our convenience sites, we pack them. We call our contractor to come and pick up the boxes and haul them away. That's our hauling line. And when they dispose of them, that would be the tipping fees that we pay as well. The action we are requesting is the board to approve the budget amendment to cover the remaining months of fiscal year 1920 the Solid Waste Department can continue to serve the citizens in Craven County. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion? So move. Second. Second. Any discussion? Commissioner Liner. Sir, what's the tipping fees demolition? The tipping fees demolition is the $40 tipping fee that we pay for the landfill. So we, we we include our demolition and bulk waste together because they're the same price. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay. Uh, I can vouch for the number of people in the landfill uh, in the uh, recycling centers. Uh, I pass 55 quite often, and I've never seen so many cars outside <laughs> on the road. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Booker? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner <clears throat> Sampson? Yes. Vice Chairman Jones? Yes. Chairman Mark? Yes. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, Department of Matters Emergency Service Budget Amendment. Stanley Kite. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, I'm presenting to you this morning a budget amendment at the conclusion of a matter that was presented by the county manager at your meeting on May the 4th. This is for emergency management performance grant funds, which are supplemental form funds that were provided uh, by FEMA down to the state of North Carolina. It requires a 50-50 match. Uh, the award was for $12,695. And I think you've already presented with the information of our proposal to buy a GLX tent, which could be used in the field for quick setup operations, which meets military specs, which includes uh, interior lights, also heating and air um, for personnel and staff to be able to function from a field office in the field. Uh, and our request is has been moved forward and approved. Therefore, we're asking you to approve the budget amendment so that we can complete the purpose. So move. Okay. okay. Uh, discussion? Um, County Manager, th this is the, uh, we was discussed this at the last meeting, did we yes, not? Yes, sir. Yeah. It's the 50-50 uh, match. Okay. Do I have a, uh, could I have a roll call vote? Commissioner Booker? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Sampson? Yes. Vice Chairman Jones? Yes. Chairman Mark? Yes. Thank you. 
Thank you, and I'd also just like to say that it uh, looks like our tropical storm is off Cape Hatteras right now, so it's moving on away from us. That's good. Oh, that's out of here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Department of Matters Health, Scott Harrelson. Yes, good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. I have uh, five uh, fee recommendations to bring forward this morning, and also after those, I wanted to give an update on uh, the uh, latest count for our COVID cases, uh, active cases, and try to answer any questions you may have about that. Um, the first three fees were actually bought to you at your last meeting and approved, and no sooner have we approved those fees than uh, Medicaid uh, increased the rates to 80% of the normal office fee. And these are as a, uh, uh, telephone fees. We're, we're doing WebEx or WebEx type uh, appointments right now over a computer, but they're not always uh, they're not always uh, available to uh, patients. So now these fees for, are for telephone appointments. And you'll notice that uh, they, they increased greatly. For instance, a 441 visit type went from $14 to $59. A uh, 442 went from 25 to 100. And a 443 went from 37 to 150. And we like to take advantage of those increases. And the fourth fee for consideration is a uh, colorectal cancer screening, um, a, a stool screening, which is sort of a precursor to see if somebody actually needs a colonoscopy. And uh, that fee is $22. And the final fee uh, for consideration is uh, a new fee for a maternal depression screening at the uh, child's um, first uh, visit. And that uh, proposed fee is seventeen dollars and twenty-eight cents. Okay. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Being there's no discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Nays. The ayes have it. Thank you. And as a uh, update on our uh, cases here in, in Craven County, we have eighty-one active cases prior to this. Uh, latest round of cases or this outbreak of cases 16 active cases was our was our high um, we have one hospitalized out of this group and i wanted to uh, convey that the vast majority of these cases are linked to uh, uh, one work site which is outside the county what has happened is somebody had taken uh, the infection into the work site it spread amongst the workers uh, they a lot of folks that live here in Craven commute to this work site and then they uh, are commuting in the cars, they bring it back to their households and unfortunately have spread it throughout their households. We do have two other uh, places of business that we're working with with this uh, particular outbreak of COVID cases. Uh, one is another is outside of Craven County and one is inside within Craven County with just a couple of cases. So. Uh, I did want to let everyone know that all of the individuals involved have, and the businesses involved have been very responsive. The individuals have done their part by coming in and being tested in a timely fashion, and uh, we have worked with them to do the necessary isolation and quarantines. And the businesses uh, have been very responsive as well. They uh, definitely want to protect the rest of their workforce, and they're basically looking at the health department here to uh, let them know when these individuals are safe to go back to work. Um, I think that one of the uh, one of the biggest issues with the individuals was assuring them that they were not going to lose their jobs uh, because of having to be out of work. And uh, these places of uh, business have given them up to the 14 days of sick leave uh, so, and assured them that, that that's not the case. So uh, with that, um, I would like to answer any questions that you may have. Okay, Scott, before you do, could you give us the total number of confirmed cases so far? Total number of confirmed right now, we're sitting at 125. I, I do anticipate that that will increase because we tested a uh, large number of people uh, this past week. Uh, Friday, we tested 60, which was the highest number of tests we've completed in a single day yet. 
and we have not received all of those uh, results yet. I, I feel we'll probably re be receiving those today, and that will probably lead me to some more contact tracing. I will say that we do think that the majority of the tests for this particular outbreak uh, have already been done. If there's any more to be done, we'll, we'll do those this week. Okay. Could you give us also the active and the recovered numbers? Uh, the active cases right now, uh, the latest data is 81, um, and uh, we have recovered uh, over uh, 40 at this point and four deaths. And one in the hospital? Yes, sir. Currently one in the hospital. Okay. Are there any questions by any of the commissioners of Scott Harrelson? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Vice Chairman. Uh, Scott, I know we're limited in, in what can be said, but I think uh, this needs to be echoed, and I think this can be relayed, is that, and you've already stated it, but I think our citizens need to hear it once again, that this is not a result of phase one uh, that the governor has instituted. I mean, that this case occurred prior to that, uh, and as you said, it was... Um, job related transferred within uh, from one to another uh, it, and you can say that more eloquently than I can I, I think that that really needs to be stressed to the <coughs> citizens of this county yes sir Commissioner Jones you're absolutely right this this really had nothing to do or correspond with uh, the phase one openings it was uh, a separate issue and uh, it would have occurred either way thank you Any other questions? Just one. Mr. Harrelson, um, of these 81 active cases that we know, um, based on your belief that most of the testing for this particular site, work site, has been completed as of yet, roughly when do you anticipate most of these people will have recovered and move off the active and transmittable uh, timeline? That's a good question. I think that uh, it will probably occur over the next three weeks because what can happen is it, it, once somebody's exposed, it, on average, it takes about five to six days before they become symptomatic. So uh, you could have some household contacts that uh, have uh, not even tested positive yet that may still test positive here in the next week or so. And uh, then about two weeks after that. So I think a, a three-week time frame is, is a good time frame for, for this actual outbreak. To this. Is there a plan to retest any of these people to make to catch any uh, people who are will not test positive yet because the virus has not established itself well enough to test positive with the antibodies in the bloodstream? Or in the system, yes, ma'am. Um, if, if people become been tested negative, uh, for instance, uh, initially become symptomatic, we'll uh, retest them. Uh, and now the guidance from the state has changed as well that uh, we actually test uh, asymptomatic close contacts, and some of them have uh, tested positive. So uh, now uh, the progression will be that anybody who is symptomatic will have to be. Uh, non-symptomatic for at least 72 hours or three days. And if there's no other household contacts uh, leading into the equation, then they are released to go back to work. And our staff right now is, is basically tracking uh, which households, because now we're at a point where we're seeing multiple positives and in one house that will be popping up the same address. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Scott, how many more uh, tests are we be doing this week, approximately? Uh, hard to say, uh, but we do have uh, enough tests. We've explained our situation to our reference lab and also the state. So uh, I, it, it's difficult to say, uh, Commissioner Mark. Um, I do think the vast majority are over. I don't think we're going to see any more uh, 60 test days. I mean, we were, we were doing 35, 35, 60. I think uh, it will probably be uh, less than 30 hours. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much, Scott. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, did we vote? Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah. 
Okay. Department Matters Finance, Greg Warren. Uh, good morning. I have one um, item on the agenda this morning. It's a budget amendment for um, retiree health insurance. Uh, the county has exceeded the original uh, budget projected for the retiree health insurance benefit. Uh, through the month of April, there have been 12 retirees added that qualified for this benefit in the current fiscal year. Um, actuals for this line are currently running about 8.6% higher than last year. Based on this new projection, uh, a budget amendment in the amount of $100,000 is needed in order to cover this shortfall. Uh, the attached budget amendment is appropriating this 100000 from the county's fund balance. Okay. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All right. I have a motion to second. Any discussion on the budget amendment? <clears throat> and there's no discussion. A roll call vote, please. Commissioner Booker? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Sampson? No. Vice Chairman Jones? Yes. Chairman Mark. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Appointments, pending, current, and upcoming. Pending appointments, adult care home advisory committee vacancy, nursing home advisory committee vacancy. Actually, right now, there is no point to appointing anybody to these two committees as we are not allowed to get into these adult care homes. But I would impress upon the commissioners that as soon as we can, we line up as many people as we can for these two committees. Uh, Juvenile Crime Prevention Council, one mental health position. Uh, I believe that was, uh, Jennifer spoke on that. Recreation Advisory Committee, District 5, vacancy. Uh, that would be Theron. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but time. Okay. Regional Aging Advisory Board. No work. Senior Legislator Har Heal Alternate Vacancy. Still working. Still working. Caroline East Board of Commissioners. Uh, I will make an announcement. This is the chairman's appointment. I have appointed Tarwick Stubbs as reappointment, M. Uh, P. O. Rogers for a reappointment, David Blaine for reappointment, and one new appointment, Thomas Mark. Current appointments for fire commissioner. Tax Commissioner James Hendricks, District 5, is seeking reappointment. Yes, he has. Talk to me about it. Okay. Reappointed by acclamation. Craven County Community Child Protection Team, Maurice Anderson, has submitted an application shown in Attachment 12B, seeking appointment to Craven <coughs> Community Child Protection Team. I'll make that up. Okay. That's acclamation. Upcoming appointments expiring in June. Emergency Medical Service Advisory Board, Havelock Planning Board, Juvenile Prevention Council, Craven County Tourism Development Authority, Coastal Carolina Regional Airport Authority, Craven County Social Service Board, Fire Tax Commissioners, Nursing Home Advisory Committee, Craven County ABC Board, and Eastern Carolina Regional Housing Authority, and New Bern Planning Zoning Board, which we'll take up at the next meeting. County Manager Report. Uh, I forgot the attorney. Did we forget him? Yes, we did. Attorney's Report. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, good morning. Uh, one item for your consideration this morning, we have an initial offer to purchase real estate. The uh, tax parcel number is 5014305, located at 865 Adams Creek Road. Um, the offer amount is $3,000, and the current tax value is $3,600. Is 
this is not a tax foreclosure uh, parcel. This is actually a parcel that the county acquired back in 07 as uh, part of a dispute resolution with the folks who own this small parcel at the time. Uh, the county's uh, settlement amount was $21,000 at the time. Um, the bid, uh, initial bid, was uh, assuming the board approved it this morning, go out at the advertised for upset bid, come back to four. Uh, the board Ari, approved. I think we're having a little problems hearing you. Yeah. If you could talk a little bit louder. Should I start over, Mr. Chairman? That's good. Okay. Um, one item for approval this morning is an initial offer to purchase uh, real estate located at 865 Adams Creek Road. The offer amount is $3,000 and the tax value is $3,600. Um, unlike uh, other parcels that the board typically considers, this uh, parcel is not owned by the county by virtue of the tax foreclosure. The county actually acquired uh, this parcel in 07 as part of a dispute resolution or settlement with the folks who owned the lot at that time. Settlement amount was uh, $21,000. Um, the process for selling this parcel is identical to the tax foreclosure parcel. So if the board approves the offer this morning, it'll go out for advertisement for upset bids and then the county um, board will have the opportunity to review the matter again once uh, the upset bid process is concluded. I'd be glad to answer any questions you may have. I have a motion. Sure. Uh, I would like to uh, table uh, attachment 13 until further notice. Uh, no further notice? Yes, sir. Do you have a date certain on that? Or? Uh, yet. Uh, we have a motion to table. Second. Do we have a second? Second. Discussion? Hmm. Commissioner Liner. I don't mind tabling it, but I don't want to. I like for it to come back at some time. Well, you will give me enough time to talk to the people in the, well, I don't care about the church, the community. Can we give you the? Because like, what happened at uh, the meeting in June? Well, it's a lot of older people, so it takes time to get in contact with them. But uh, the land was there. The land was rented by by that church years ago, and. The land is part of the church, which they were using for hurricanes to put the cars and boats and also other uh, engagements. And I, I, I feel that the church should get up his land due to the fact that it's a small piece of land, it's not big as a lot, and it's a square area. What, what I'm seeing that there's a large, large ditch. ditch. It's about five feet long and five feet deep. And go to an area like this here, what the plan doing is dig a ditch this way towards Advent Creek and take that dirt and put the other part of the ditch and put a fence up and cover the church up. You can't see it. And I don't know exactly what to put out there, but a lot of land do not perp. They put big fill out, like putting a horse stable or something out there. We do not want it there. Well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to discuss that or argue that right now. I'm just wondering. I don't want this to go on forever. I mean, I don't mind tabling it. I'll support tabling it, but I think we need a date. Yeah, I think we need a date too. Well, I'll give you, I'll give you a date. Um, this is, is it May? Yeah. Say June 15th? No, it's too early. Uh, Miss last last uh, meeting in June. Miss that is the last meeting in June. You got you got to, uh, this, this day meeting, correct? Yeah. Mr. Chair, the I'd like to clarify, this land does not belong to the church. It is being used by the church. And if the church would like to purchase this property, I am all in favor of it if they would like to come in with an upset bid. But I think it sets a very dangerous precedent for county land to be utilized by organizations that are not part of the county unless they are actually paying rent 
or unless they have actually purchased it. And one of my questions would be is when was the last time the county or this church actually paid rent on this property? The other thing is that the couple who wishes, wishes to purchase it, they are devout Christians. I believe they might be very willing to work with this church. Um, I applaud the use of using the land as a refuge during storms, but again, I don't believe we can start the precedent of using county land as a refuge for, a refuge for property during storms unless we are going to increase our liability insurance substantially to cover that property, personal property, sitting on county dirt. If we want to table it, I'm okay with tabling it till June 15th, but not, it looks to me like this has been going on and on for years. We have a valid purchase offer. If the church wishes, wishes to come in with an upset bid, that's fine. But I don't, um, I am uncomfortable with a use situation that the county and the taxpayers are not being compensated for. Mr. Chair, I don't think June the 15th is enough time for me to talk to the people of the community. I'd like to have further that the last meeting in June. <coughs> well, the, that is the last meeting in June for the, the board, as I, re, as I recall. It is. It is. You would have to go. Yeah. So. Uh, you would have to go June 6th. I mean, July 6th. You know, I don't see no problem. And give them a little bit more time to get up with the people. I, I think we we owe the community time because sometimes you don't know who's in charge or what right. when you're dealing with churches. So we need to give them a, him a little time to do some talking to the people and see where it stands there. Excuse me, Mr. Chair, what the, uh, the church there will use the land. Ever since I was a commissioner in 2006. There was renting in it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it stopped. Uh, I remember this land. I went down there when I was chairman in 2014. Mm -hmm. And I uh, remember I went down there with you, if I'm not yes. mistaken. Uh -huh. And the idea was the church was going to offer to buy it at that time, as I remember. I don't remember me offering to buy it, but we was renting it so much a year. Or, or, re or renting leasing it, it. it. yeah. But uh, there, is a, a, there is a creation of a liability here uh, uh, by the church, if, if by, for the county, if somebody pulls into that lot and has an accident or something else. I think that uh, uh, a date certain is definitely in order. Uh, uh, 15th of this month, uh, June, was mentioned, which gives us how many weeks there, about uh, M four weeks but the next meeting would be six july that's that's six, that's six okay. and a half weeks Your time go by fast you have a uh commissioner has a client that wants to buy uh yes sir the couple that wishes to buy this property um this 22 acres that they wish to add this half acre plot to uh this is not for their just for their private residence they intend to establish a niche farm they are already buying equipment for it um, what kind of farm? Niche farm for what is that? Uh, rather than, for example, like Commissioner Jones does, which would be soybeans or corn or whatever, they would be looking to do. Is it, is it, uh, it's high grade of uh, water. You can't plant it there. Well, that's what they're planting. It doesn't even perk. I don't think that that, well, number one, I don't think they need a septic system to farm uh -huh. on that particular half acre. And number two, I don't think it is the commission's job to establish is this a viable business plan or not? Um, I'd also like to point out that the couple who offer, who would like to turn this into a farm, include a disabled vet and an amputee. Um, so this is not just private property. This will be a business uh, enterprise. Uh, CT, I don't want to get in the hall with you, but I'm, I'm telling you, like this here, I know the reason why I don't want that piece of land. All right, Let, uh, that's neither here nor there. I mean. Uh, what we're arguing over now is a date certain for the tabling. Uh, would your people be willing to wait till July 6th? That doesn't have a price. Can't plant crops in July. Can't. Uh, can't plant nothing in there. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, but, but I mean, well, 
He I, wants July. Uh, well, I, I would prefer June fifteenth because I think that also gives the church time to decide if they want to do an upset bid. And one of my questions is, when was the last time the county received? A rent payment from the church. Um, not, I, I don't know the answer, and the county manager may not either. Um, but I would like to propose an alternative motion of bringing this back to the board on June 15th. I make a motion to uh, July 6th. All right, we're going to take a vote. We have two motions here, uh, two dates here. Mr. Chairman, for we vote on Mr. Chairman, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, for we vote on this here, you said the uh, land is a liability. Why can't be a liability if you rent land years ago? We've been rich. It can't be a liability because the county has allowed it. Yeah, so it's not, it's not a liability. No, I mean we we were being. I think the county was being nice to, to the church in this case. Well, still, allowing them to be there. There you go. County manager, do you have a comment? I mean, I I'll be perfectly blunt. I'm completely unaware of any refuge status of this property for that community. I mean, it very well could have gone on. I'll be honest. It's not a piece of property we're reviewing very often. Uh, to answer Commissioner Mitchell's question. I believe it was about 2014 was the last time we had a lease with him. Nan's going to check after the meeting for the file. I think that's 14 was the last year. And I'm not sure we collected payment in that year. I'll have to go back and pull the file. Now, we've had a motion to table until June 15th. We've had a motion to table until Indefinite. July 6th, I believe it was. And then the first one was to table indefinitely. Uh, Mr. Attorney, could I have some advice here? And my apologies for stepping in. The uh, audio is a little difficult in the other room, so I missed uh, the first few minutes of the conversation. I, I think the way I would look at it is that uh, Mr. McKay's um, motion to table until July the 6th. The first meeting in July. You yes. made a motion, and then I believe you are effectively amending the motion, but you have to have a second. What well, must have amended? I believe he had a second. Yeah. And then the, then reassert the second. You can vote on that motion, and then you'll have, a, a, depending on the outcome, then you may have the, the second motion you can take up. <laughs> if that makes sense. To me. Yes, it does. So uh, I'd like to. We have a motion for July sixth. We had a second for July sixth. Uh, can I have a roll call vote on that, please? So we're voting on tabling until July 6, just so Correct. everybody's aware. Commissioner Booker? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Commissioner Mitchell? No. Commissioner Sampson? No. Vice Chairman Jones? Yes. And Chairman Mark? Yes. Mr. Chairman. Um, County Manager? Yes, sir. Um, Commissioner McCabe stated in that this lot is used, and you just restated it, that you were not aware of it, but he stated it is used as a refuge during adverse weather events. Mm -hmm. um, knowing the Adams Creek Road Limited, I mean, I do know that it does flood some, uh, and they get trapped in there. Um, I'd, I'd like to ask for if the board would agree to have maybe your staff to just look into this, maybe emergency management. And it may even, I mean, you know, it may even be to a point, you know, if this is a location that is utilized for those citizens during adverse weather events, it may even behoove us to consider um, donating it to the fire department or something for those, along those lines, um, that it can still be used for those resources. Um, I think we have a little bit of conflict, maybe, with both sides of this, um, and, you know, I, I understand that we're not in the business to pick winners or losers, as was stated, you know. Um, um, this is owned by the citizens of the county, it needs to be put back on the tax books. But all of us know um, each community is different, and um, if this community does utilize this um, as a resource during those times, then I think it would be to our benefit to let it remain that, but not in our possession. And um, I think uh, the fire department, they do a good job in, in watching out for folks. And so I'd like you to see if that's, it may not even be feasible, 
But I'd just like for it to be investigated and look to see if the wheel changed. Uh, Mr. Jones, there certainly is a statute that would allow the county to transfer this property to, it essentially says, a nonprofit or another organization uh, executing a governmental purpose. So the uh, volunteer fire department would, would qualify, and it's in the board's discretion uh, whether to pursue that or not. And also, it could, could it be put in there, as you know, they cannot sell it, it has to remain for that purpose. Yes, sir, you could put whatever deed restrictions uh, the board might want uh, in the conveyance. Also, Mr. Chair, the uh, fire department there, which I want to talk about it, also use it as training in that area for, for the community there. Okay. Uh, I, as it stands right now, I think we had the motion. Uh, unless we have another motion, it would stand that we'll take this till July 6th. So I, I won't try and say not to take it back up. I think the board's got to take it back up. I was just stating that I'd like no. to see staff yeah. look into some of these other options. I mean, if it needs to be put in a form of a motion, I'll be glad to do it. I've, I've got, I can take the guidance that's been given. Ari and I have made eye contact several times. We, okay. we'll, write a, we'll just give you a report. How's that? All right. Yeah. So this will be tabled until July 6th. Six. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. Yes, sir. Always my Thank pleasure. You. I'm sure it was, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I believe we have the county manager coming up at this point. <laughs> yes, sir. Wow. I was telling Nan before the meeting, it's hard to believe it's a year. Here we are again with the new budget proposal in front of you. Um, you do have two different documents in front of you. One is a white binder, has the 2020-2021 recommended budget. This is the budget document that we'll work for, work with through our budget work sessions. You also have what's my favorite document the county produces. It's your 2021 recommended budget supplement. This is all the metrics that we ask the departments to put together to support um, requests in the budget also let you have an idea of how many employees what their budget size is how they're funded I, I tell you this is if, if you want to learn about county government anybody in, in Craven County this is the document to do it by so <clears throat> if you would open your white binder and it should be uh, the second page will be the budget message and I, I made some notes before I, I read the budget message to you and to the public, I wanted to make some notes here just to kind of tell you a little bit about what the last 18 months has been like. And I know you acutely are aware of this fact, but I found it as an anomaly in my career that over the last 18 months, five of those months, we were in a state of emergency. That is remarkable uh, for a county, a local government unit, to deal with five months of state of emergencies and many of you are aware we spent almost two months uh, a little over two months in hurricane florence and we're approaching three months here very quickly uh, with covid 19. the other 13 months uh, of that 18 month period were spent simply recovering we were trying to find the new norm after hurricane florence we didn't know what it was you guys have been through numerous work sessions with us over the last year where we talked about huge numbers to put county buildings back together. We talked about a transformation in how the county offers services. Where should we be located? How do our public schools function? What do they need? I mean, these variety of big picture questions that we were right at the cusp of starting to answer, right at the cusp in February, and COVID-19 happened. And this budget uh, is not the budget that we started with to give you based on our work through this fiscal year. It's disappointing to me personally, I'll tell you that. There was a lot of effort by a lot of parties on my staff and other staffs in this county that were preparing us to take the next step. This budget takes a step backwards. I want to admit that up front. This is not a budget that moves Craven County forward. It holds on. It deals with the challenges in revenue that we know are going to be there. They're, they're there already. We just got to find them and realize them in the next fiscal year. But I find a sense of hope in here because there are still some ways that we can move Craven County forward. And one of them was something I learned last week that I think is a really exciting partnership between the military, Craven County Schools, and Craven County. I'm excited about those things because we do need to get this back on the right track. 
Um, and just, just a couple other words. Craig and I did this budget in a vacuum this year. We, we typically have a team approach with our management staff. Craig and I did this budget over the phone, um, over the phone and computer. I never thought we would do a budget like that. It, it's, it's definitely not the way Craig and I ever want to do it again, I'll tell you that. We're going to find a way, a hyperbolic chamber or something next year if we still have to deal with this, but we're going to find a way. My question to you, and particularly the new commissioners who've only, this will be your, your second, what is a normal county budget? I don't know the answer to that anymore. I thought we were getting there last year. I think we're moving further away from that this year. We do have the opportunity, and I'll tell you where there are some revenues that are hard to predict because we just won't know until July of what sales tax and oxy tax and how quickly we recover from this crisis. Uh, but there will be an opportunity to come back mid-year. It may be the opportunity where we've got to come in and have a serious conversation about what's next on the list to reduce. Or we could have a conversation as what's on the next of the list to fund. I hope we're there talking about that. I think we can see the light a little bit. Um, it's going to be nationally, regionally, state, and then locally as we see that recovery happening. A lot of our budget is tied to a consumer or tied to someone that has the ability to pay for something. Those are important parts of our budget. Progress is what funds government. If we don't have progress, we cannot fund the things that we need to fund. I want to make... Um, Two, two additional statements. Last Monday, last Monday a week ago, was my 10-year anniversary with Craven County. When I started 10 years ago, I started right before we started meeting on the budget. So I had no earthly idea what to expect from a Craven County budget. And it was a great experience. That year was a good year. The second year, we went into the recession a little later than our neighbors, right? We, hit, we held on. So we dealt with several years of trying to figure out when was it going to stop, when were we going to start going back, when's residential building going to come. Uh, I have enjoyed my 10 years with Craven County immensely. It has been an absolute honor to serve the folks in here. And I will tell you, this isn't the budget that our citizens deserve, and that's what bothers me. It's going to bother you when you get here because there are things we need to do. I just want to leave that with you. The last thing, and I'll tell you, I will never, ever in my career do this one last thing. It's a note to anybody that's listening that has an idea about doing this. We will not change budget format systems in the middle of two natural disasters. And that's what happened. Uh, this is the first year we did budget in Munis. There's a new format in here we're all going to have to get used to. It took Craig and I an extra week just to get started to figure out how to read the numbers. But this was the investment that the commissioners made three years ago to change over our financial software, HR software, IT. I mean, this is the modernization approach, right? This is web-based. It's just taken us a heck of a long time to learn it because right when it was supposed to be implemented, Hurricane Florence hit. So I'll leave that. Uh, let, me, let me read you the budget message, and I'll be available for questions. I do want to note uh, you did already authorize the public hearing for June 1st on the recommended budget, and we do have a work session, uh, our first one, on Wednesday. All right, Mr. Chairman and members of the Board of Commissioners, it is my privilege to present to you the recommended fiscal year 2021 budget for Craven County. As proposed, this budget incorporates the priorities and policy direction of the Board of Commissioners while continuing to provide the highest quality of services to the citizens of Craven County in the most fiscally responsible manner. The proposed budget is balanced and recommends that the ad valorem tax rate for fiscal year 2021 remain the same as the current year at 54.94 cents per $100 evaluation. The recommended general fund budget for fiscal year 2021 is $114,699,171 and includes a fund balance appropriation of $1,065,553 to balance the budget. Although the recommended budget includes a fund balance appropriation, local governments are strongly encouraged to maintain adequate fund balances to ensure against unanticipated events that could adversely affect the county's financial position and jeopardize the continuation of county services. Side note, we all understand what that means now. We know how important fund balance is after the last 18 months. As such, the county continues to budget and operate in a fiscally responsible manner, which has provided a fund balance sufficient enough to accomplish this while also remaining consistent with that of our peers statewide. Craven County's available fund balance was 27.9% of expenditures at June 30, 2019. That was the point we were last audited. 
while other counties with over 100,000 in population had fund balances averaging 28.06% and all 100 counties averaging 30.43%. Revenue collected for the first 10 months of the fiscal year are 4.4 million ahead of last year, while expenditures for the same period approximately 3.5 more. Asterix, those 10 months reflected pre-COVID time. We are just now starting to see COVID, which will have a significant decrease. I have to say that because I don't want you to walk away thinking we were having a great, we're going to have a great year. We had a great year and then it stopped 10 months in. The increase in revenue has mostly been a direct result of the positive growth in commercial and residential development experience within the county. Sales tax collections for the year through April have been running 9.3% higher than the same time last year. Additionally, better than projected revenues received from other sources, including the Medicaid sales tax hold harmless distribution and increased investment earnings have also contributed to the county's enhanced revenue position while offsetting the increases to expenditures. The positive economic conditions that we have experienced so far this fiscal year are not expected to continue due to the ever-changing conditions related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Expenditures and transfers out for the first 10 months of fiscal year 2020 are higher than the previous year, mostly due to budgeted increases across many of the functional areas, including general government, public safety, and environmental protection. Some of these increases are one-time costs, such as the county's emergency response to both Hurricane Dorian and the COVID-19 pandemic, while others are reoccurring, such as the two additional school resource officers funded by the county in our elementary schools and the continuation of the county's curbside recycling program. The county ended fiscal year 2019 in a strong financial position, adding approximately $2.2 million to fund balance. Higher than projected revenue, along with the county's conservative approach to spending, provided the ability to transfer $408,000 into the Capital Reserve Fund last fiscal year. Although we were able to make a transfer in, approximately $1.2 million was used towards budgeted capital items and projects reducing the Capital Reserve's fund balance by approximately $642,000 as of June 30th, 2019. As we have experienced over the past few years, funding of the capital reserve when excess revenues or savings are realized continues to serve as an important part of the county, county's financial position and provides for future needs while helping to prevent tax increases and borrowing costs to fund capital items. There are a number of factors that had a significant impact on the proposed budget. The current assessed value for fiscal year 2021 is estimated to be $9.9 billion a 5.77% increase over the estimate of $9.36 billion used for the fiscal 2020 budget. The county has experienced growth in the tax base over the past year, with most of the increase being the result of the recovery efforts from Hurricane Florence progressing much faster than anticipated. Total revenues and expenditures each amount to $114 million $699,171 in the recommended budget for fiscal 2021. This represents a decrease of 1.5 million or 1.3% compared to the current budget of $116,202,160 through the end of April. Property tax revenues are estimated to increase by 5.7% over the amount budgeted in fiscal year 2020, while sales tax revenues are projected to decrease. It is expected that the COVID-19 pandemic will have significant impacts on this revenue source heading into the fiscal 2021 budget year. The recovery of this revenue source will be over an extended period of time as public safety restrictions are lifted and consumer activity returns to normal le levels. As there is no comparative data for a public health crisis such as this, the methodology most widely being adopted around the state is to project sales tax using a staggered approach to recovery with adjustments each quarter. Our adjustments to budget sales tax next year is based on the most recent 12 months of collection using a quarterly reduction of 15% for the first quarter, 10% for the second and third quarters, and a 5% reduction for the fourth quarter. Overall, sales tax revenues are budgeted at a decrease of 805,000, and this budget also includes no new fee increases no new fees or increase in fees this year. Transfers into the general fund from the capital reserve fund are down approximately $1,062,054 from the current budget. Capital expenditures and major repair projects were closely examined and only as a result of the capital reserve fund, many were able to be funded. Overall capital outlay costs are down approximately 1.3 million compared to the current budget. 
out of the total 4.2 million capital expenditures budgeted for fiscal year 2021, 2.7 million is funded with transfers from the capital reserve fund. The majority of capital expenditures funded in this budget include the maintenance and replacement of vital infrastructure in the areas of technology and facility improvements. In addition to the capital items funded in this budget, the county is planning for several major projects heading into next fiscal year. One of these is the continuation of the county's Enterprise Resource Planning ERP software replacement project. With the accounting module completed in fiscal 2019, resources have been allocated towards implementing the payroll human resource module, which is expected to be completed in the fall 2020. The remaining utility billing and permitting modules are expected to begin in the spring and summer of 2021. Phase two of this project includes the replacement of the tax software. Both the collections and billing modules went live earlier this fiscal year, leaving only the appraisal component to complete. The completion date for the appraisal module is targeted for the summer of 2022. The county's Hurricane Florence recovery efforts will continue with the restoration and improvement of the convention center. The restoration phase of this project has been completed with the improvements to expand the pre-function space and back veranda underway. These are expected to be completed in September of 2020. Other major hurricane recovery projects include the restoration of the courthouse buildings, relocation of the Lawson Creek pump station, and repairs to the water systems telemetry components. All three of these projects are in the final stages of planning with final funding determinations being negotiated with FEMA. Other major projects programmed into the fiscal year 2021 budget include completing the construction of the new Recreation Administration Building offices at Creekside Park, replacement of the camera system at the Judicial Center Complex, completion of the epoxy flooring project at the jail, and improvements at Creekside Park to increase citizen accessibility. The total salaries and benefits in the recommended budget for fiscal 2021 are $300,000 higher than the original budget of 2020 and does not include a cost of living adjustment for county employees. This increase does not take into consideration the additional 27th pay period budgeted in the current fiscal year. After adjusting for this additional pay period, the increase in total salaries and benefits would have been 1.7 million. Of the increase, approximately 302,000 was four positions added during the current fiscal year. Those included an information and communication specialist in HR, a finance accounting technician three, two school resource officers at Brinson Memorial Elementary and Arthur W. Edwards Elementary Schools, and a child support deputy. There are 12 new full-time positions recommended in the budget, and they are as follows. An HR technician two, an IT database analyst, an opioid and farms violence investigator, four school resource officers, one sheriff administrative assistant, one telecommunicator one, a hospice accounting clerk, four, a social worker one, and a social worker three. Total benefit costs are budgeted to be approximately $930,000 higher than the current budget as a result of increases in the county's health and dental premiums and the retirement system rates. So far this year, health and dental claims have been running higher than last year's levels. To offset these costs, the budget includes a 5% increase to both county and employee premiums and accounts for $419,000 of the total increase to benefit cost. For the second year in a row, the retirement system employer contribution rates were increased in the budget by 1.2%. This accounts for $460,000 of the total increase in benefit costs and is the rate established under the retirement system's employer contribution rate stabilization policy, which is anticipated to remain the same through fiscal 2022. Overall current expense funding for Craven County Schools is recommended to remain flat at $22,129,991 per their request and continues the county's investment and support for our local school system. The school system faces budget challenges that are complex and varied, similar to the county. While this recommended funding amount continues Craven County's commitment to the school system, there are still long-term issues that will need to be addressed. As revenues from federal and state sources tied to enrollment numbers continue to decline, the cost to operate and maintain these shrinking schools does not. This issue will be ongoing and will likely need to be addressed as we plan for the future. Current budget challenges faced by the schools in the upcoming budget year include increases for retirement system contributions and health care premiums, in addition to decreases in federal and state funding as enrollment declines. 
Forecasted numbers by the schools continue to predict the decline in enrollment, enrollment will continue over the next four years in all areas K-12. In addition to funding these increases, the budget also recommends increasing the local supplement by 1% to 10% at an annual cost of $653,000 in order to meet the school system's priority of improving teacher recruitment and retention. Capital outlay requested is $1,994,967, the same as the current year's budget, and includes two Category 1 projects over $100,000, including a gym floor replacement at Havelock High School at $160,000 and corridor fire door replacements at Dubrin High School for $150,000. Also included in the capital outlay amount requested is $900,000 and continues the third year of funding for the system's, uh, system's year Apple iPad lease agreement, which I think we all know is such a lifesaver at this particular point in time. The proposed budget funds Craven Community College's requested current expense at $3,929,300, which represents an increase of $168,185 over the current year. Part of this increase includes $28,394 towards additional personnel costs for salaries, retirement, and health benefits. The budget also funds the full year allocations of both the Volt Workforce Development Center in Newburn and the new STEM Learning Building in Havelock. The expenses for both the Volt Center and the new STEM Center were phased in over time to correspond with the programming of services at both facilities and the reoccurring expenses were anticipated. Capital outlay for the college was budgeted at $373,000 due to the college realizing savings from deferred maintenance projects that were not performed due to COVID-19 pandemic. It is anticipated this allocation will return to the agreed upon amount of $500,000 in subsequent budgets. The proposed fiscal year 2021 budget provides balance and fiscal responsibility in addressing the many needs across the county while continuing to maintain the lowest tax rate possible for the citizens of Craven County. Craven County values the competitive edge, maintaining a low tax rate offers in areas such as economic development and retirement relocations. As always, there is still the possibility that the General Assembly may take actions that could affect the county's budget. We will continue to monitor for those potential impacts However, I believe Craven County continues to be well positioned fiscally to address any challenges that may come forward. I wish to commend the department heads, staff, and agencies for their cooperation and valuable assistance in this very difficult budget process, and I mean very difficult when I say that. I would also like to thank our finance director, Craig Warren, who's done a tremendous amount of work on this in a new system and remotely. Assistant County Manager Gene Hodges and Human Resource Director Amber Parker for their contribu essential contributions in developing this budget. I look forward to working with the Board of Commissioners in finalizing the fiscal 2021 budget. The recommended budget shall immediately be available for public inspection in the manager's office, and we will also post it on the county's website. I recommend the board schedule a public hearing at 7 p.m. on June 1st, 2020, and conduct budget study sessions as required, which you have already acted upon at this meeting. Submitted respectfully by the county manager. I'm available for questions if there are any, or um, we can hold those to Wednesday. Your choice. <clears throat> I, I want to commend the county manager and finance director and assistant county manager for the work that they put in uh, this year because this has been one heck of a year for putting a budget together. The commissioners over the next several days uh, you'll receive this you receive this budget now you have this afternoon and tomorrow to go over it before we meet on Wednesday I think the citizens of this county have taken and withstood a hurricane a covert 19 experience we have businesses that are going to go out of business we have people that are unemployed and I think it's the duty of this Board of Commissioners that in going over their budget that we look at it as protecting the citizens of this county and setting an example of coming in with a lean budget this year so that next year we can have a greater budget. 
Uh, we must set the example, and I mentioned it before, of going without going to some of these conferences, although one conference has been canceled already, uh, which would save the county money. But in many other areas, the commissioners have funds that are available to them for certain things uh, that have to do with uh, the uh, ability to furnish other chapters of, uh, that are not governmental with money. I think we have to look at this in a lean way. But I think that this group of commissioners in the past has come out and presented budgets to the citizens of this county that have given them lower taxes, good property values, and I think that we will be able to do this again. And I just want to thank all the commissioners for the work that they have done during this COVID-19 experience. It hasn't been easy for the citizens of this county. It hasn't been easy for the county commissioners. And we know that the, the state at this point is probably going to be having a lean year also. So I, I just want to thank the commissioners for everything they've done. I want to thank the citizens of this county for everything they've done. And uh, I'll open it up to any questions by any of the commissioners for the county ma manager and myself. Being no questions, uh, I'd like to take an enjoyment for 15 minutes. Thank you. Comments that you would no, like sir, to I make during the commission's present moment. This is, it's going to be bad. I think we can schedule something back on December. Yeah. And, and no comments. No comments. Day. Commissioner Sampson. Oh, yes. I just, <clears throat> I was just uh, looking at our, at the Sun Journal a few days ago, and I was reading about we had a, uh, Two teachers that that made the headline. One of them was from was it overall made the teacher of the year or Gail Hardy named the teacher of the year the Gail Harvey <coughs> advancement PIA individual determinates to elect the teacher at New Bern High School has been selected as the 2020 21 teacher ambassador for Craven County School as an able teacher, Hardy helps students develop the skills they need to be successful in college. Hardy works with avid students by placing a special emphasis on growing, writing, critical thinking, teamwork, organization, and reading skills. For more than 50 years, our nation, nation has honored teachers with the National Teachers of the Year program. In 2014, the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction announced that partnership with Burroughs Welcome Fund as the new major sponsor of the North Carolina Teachers of the Year program. So I'm, I'm really proud that we had a lady to receive this award. It seemed like a lot of time the ladies don't get their due processes. And I'm really proud of this. And also, we also had a local teacher in Craven County to re <coughs> it made headlines. Uh, West Craven to, to borrow Wallace. Here's the headlines. 
Read the headlines on this. And I thought it was real nice for him to receive this award. He's been an outstanding teacher for quite a while. And uh, he, was, he had made or uh, got the same award this teacher, this other teacher got this year. He, I think he had received it twice, but he was also in the news. Or a few uh, for for this uh, award that he received, which was out, uh, an outstanding award, and it was something that uh, we were very proud of. I've been known to borrow Wallace. I knew the family before Wallace was even born, but he had been doing an outstanding job in the Craven County school system because right now we don't even have many, many black teachers now, but he's been a principal for quite a while. He was even over television concerning this award that they gave him. And I'm really proud of our teachers in Craven County because they are doing an outstanding job. And we, I'm, I'm sure that we can be, feel proud because the county really has supported the school system in our county. So we just like to give, give our thanks to these teachers who has gone, most of our teachers go to the second mile, but they even went even further the third mile to make our school system what it is today. <laughs> and if we ever need strong teaching, it's in our school system now that we can let our kids go to school and don't fear them, without fear of them not learning the material that is given out to them. We know we never have 100%, but as long as we get in the passing grade, it's a great attribute for Craven County. That's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Booker. Two things. Number one, at our last meeting, we voted to send a letter to the governor, and we're joined by, I think, seven or eight other counties. Uh, my question to the county manager, have we gotten a reply from the governor on that letter? I'm not aware of one, sir. Um, look to the chairman. I don't... I'm not aware of one either. So two weeks, uh, we didn't even um, get the courtesy of a, a reply. That's... Uh, Disappointing, to say the least. The second thing is, uh, on December, I believe, 3rd, 2018, <clears throat> excuse me, um, when we were sworn in as commissioners, as I walked off of the podium, the very first person I met, I wish I had her name, uh, was a lady from Carolina Colors. And she said to me, we got to do something about the light on Thurman Road. Um, I said, "Well, ma'am, let me let me first figure out what my uh, where my seat is before you uh, before you get too excited." But I, I, at that time, um, shortly thereafter, I discussed it with the county manager, and um, I was aware prior to that that there was concern about that light, and and the concern was that the Intersection was very dangerous. There had been a lot of accidents there because the intersection wasn't aligned. The roads coming from one direction on Thurman Road was offset from the other direction. As a result, uh, the term that was used by a number of people was we play chicken every time we come out and we want to make a turn because we don't know who's going to go and who isn't going to go. Well, I'm pleased to say that uh, 18 months later, 17 months, whatever. Uh, I want to commend the uh, the manager and his staff for staying with it because the first response we got from the state was that well that intersection is going to go away when we when we um, re when we redo uh, US 70, and my response was yeah but that's three or four years away. This is over a year ago now, 
and we don't want to wait because there could be serious accidents, and in fact there have been since in the last year and a half. At any, any rate, to make a long story short, I know it's too late, but the light has now been changed. There is now a turn arrow from each direction so that the people coming out of Carolina Colors, and that traffic continues to increase as that, as that community grows, those people now can get a turn arrow so they're not facing cars coming at them from the other direction. Uh, the arrow's a little too brief right now. I think it only lets about three cars through and then it, it goes yellow, but the state has assured me they're gonna go back out and get that adjusted. So thank you, uh, County Manager and your staff for uh, keeping after uh, the state to get that done. And, and uh, it wasn't a great cost, but uh, they obviously have a lot of projects that they're they're working on thousand dollars yeah and I did also talk to them about the the rotary that's been approved by, out in the western part of our county and they say that uh, I believe he said to me they expect within a year that that should be underway yeah I don't know why it take they got to do the engineering first and that's not done yet and then they gotta they gotta go to the next step so anyway it's still in the jar as the saying goes so that's it, thank you. Commissioner Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Two things, please. Um, one, I would like to commend the Craven and Pamlico County Animal Shelter. When I moved here 10 years ago, the euthanasia rate was close to 100%. Virtually all of the animals that were received in the shelter were put down. I spoke with the director over the weekend it is now 21%, which is below the state's average of 28%. So we have made huge progress under our new shelter director, and that is very commendable. Um, the other thing, it, my second issue, is I would like to commend the citizens of this county for being so responsible about um, maintaining the stay-at-home orders, about being so careful with masks, with gloves, with disinfectant and personal sanitation, I think it has helped uh, keep many of our citizens safe. But I would also caution them to be careful. If you see a neighborhood gathering in somebody's backyard, call your police department, call your sheriff and let them address it. It may be something going down that you're not aware of, don't need to get involved with it, or it may be a gathering in the wake of a tragedy. You don't know, so let the proper authorities deal with it. And the other one I would ask is be kind and compassionate when you see someone who is not wearing a mask uh, as opposed to confronting them publicly. There are many valid medical reasons, psychological reasons, and background reasons for not wearing masks. Um, everything from low hemoglobin to craniofacial deformities to victims of abuse and trauma may not be able to wear masks as well. Um, and the reason I'm saying this is I saw an elderly couple in the grocery store get chewed up one side and down the other because they were not wearing masks. He had a terminal brain cancer and he could not recognize his wife of 50 years when, he was we when she was wearing a mask and they were in tears. So um, be kind, be compassionate, and assume other people are doing so for the most part, because I think most of our citizens are responsible and are very careful, but you don't know what shoes they're gonna be walking in. That's all, sir. Thank you. Commissioner Liner. Sure, thank you. Uh, sad news to announce on, we've had a lot of sad news on that, but these two people were important to this community have done a lot for this community I think you all know Arlen Bell passed away last week on that he served the school board for a number of years he served Havelock in this county in different roles throughout his life he was my opponent during my first election and a fine gentleman and always supported me once I got elected on that so it's a great loss for the community another Great gentleman, if you ever met him, always had a smile on his face, and that was the mayor of Pine Knoll Shores, Ken Jones. He was always helpful, always supported this community, Craven County, even though it was across the river, 
down there, he w was always helpful and, and good. So it's a great big loss for the area. Next, I'd like to thank the Sheriff's Department for being out there Friday. They had a parade in Carolina Pines to honor all of the seniors throughout. A large turnout, large people, a lot of people turned out in their homes for the senior, seniors to honor them. Seniors are missing out on a lot of big challenges that we've all received. We've graduated. I mean, it's, it's, it's a loss, but it was, it was great and well received on that. Another thing, this is not going to be published. It's not going to be in the paper, but I'm going to make the announcement on it. I'm not inviting anybody, but I'm letting you know that Monday at noontime, the 25th, Memorial Day, the Military Council and myself will be laying a wreath at the county courthouse in, memor in, re in remembrance of Memorial Day at one of the monuments there. Since we're not allowed to be in the cemetery to have the honors there. Now, don't get me wrong, the VA is holding a wreath lane at the cemetery with no public invited. There's no flags that will be put out on the graves there. But the cemetery will be open. Families are allowed to go inside. Families are allowed to put a flag on their individual grave or a friend's grave. There just will not be flags put out by the VA that the cemetery has that we normally do for every grave site in that site. So, but the cemetery has been open. Cemetery will be open all week of Memorial Day weekend to receive family members and friends to come out there. That's all, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Chairman. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I don't have anything. Uh, Vice Chairman, I, I think I said enough today. I don't have anything. So let's call for an adjournment. Uh, for 15 minutes. Session. Uh, we'll go closed session. At recess. 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 Recess.